Greetings. Thank you for joining us. Today we're going to give you a brief demonstration of SyncView. SyncView is a visual factory information system from Synchrono Manufacturing Software. Today Sarah Huner is joining us on the call. Sarah is the product manager for SyncView Software and she'll be conducting the demonstration. So without further ado, let's get started. To lend some context for the demo, we view demand-driven manufacturing as enabling a synchronized, closed loop between customer orders, production scheduling, and manufacturing execution, all to coordinate the flow of materials across resources and the supply chain. Given that, demand-driven manufacturing provides real-time synchronization of customer orders, production scheduling, and manufacturing execution. Synchrona has a portfolio of systems that work independently or collectively in demand-driven environments. Starting from the upper left and moving clockwise, we have Sync Manufacturing, which is an adaptive planning, scheduling, and execution system. We have Sync Operations, which enables the Internet of Things. It aggregates and analyzes data from systems, machines, and has a data historian as well as workflow automation capabilities. Sync Alert is a real-time alert notification and escalation package. And Sync Kanban is our e-Kanban system. It's a pool-based inventory replenishment solution for supply chain execution and collaboration. And finally, subject of today is Sync View. Sync View is a self-directed visual factory information system that provides real-time access to information so you can make instant informed decisions. Many analysts, including Gartner, have been talking about big data, the industrial internet of things, and more, and how to translate all this data we're collecting into meaningful information that we can actually use. Towards that end, Gartner validates our approach to SyncView and providing access to performance data that is contextualized and role-driven, and most importantly, self-service access. In other words, access is simple and intuitive for everyone. In their research, Gardner suggests that self-service analytics can add context to trend data that describes manufacturing processes based on specific roles. It can open the door to more scientific approaches to predicting when and how to maintain equipment. It allows for continuous collaboration across the supply chain and more. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Sarah, who's going to provide a little bit more information on SyncView and launch into the, a demo of the application. Thank you, Pam. Thank you is, as Pam mentioned, Synchrono's real-time visual factory information system. The goal of SyncView is to provide organization-wide transparency and visibility to all users within the manufacturing operations and management space. The primary focus is for SyncView to be able to be user-directed and provide the data visualization elements that they want to see. As a user-directed data visualization system, SyncView supports various roles and allows users themselves to create and view what they want to see when they want to see it. And it takes an information-driven management approach of operations, meaning that by working from all enterprise applications and all available data within the enterprise, you're looking and making decisions off of information driven off of the systems and real-time status itself. And finally, it's flexible and scalable so that anybody can create any number of visual boards and information displays and they can also be broadcast and shared across an entire organization. The possibilities are limitless. When it comes to the data possibilities of SyncView, there's an entire range of what can be used to provide the incoming data to which to be visualized. One of those areas is around demand-driven manufacturing platform elements. As Pam went through, a number of the products within the platform directly provide information regarding schedules, 
manufacturing operations, maintenance and alerts, downtime and escalation. All of these are used within those applications but can all be wrapped up into SyncView itself. It also can be met with other data sources like other enterprise applications such as your ERP, PLM system, or others. And finally, if you have any database, the information available, if, if important to operations, can be accessed and also added to SyncView so that you really are having all these converge into one single point from which to create real-time information and data. SyncView itself, which you see in the center, provides a easy interface by which users can come in and build information displays from all of these incoming data, data centers. From that, the boards themselves can be viewed on large screen monitors, tablet or mobile devices, as well as a desktop. Within the platform itself, SyncView provides the visual layer on top of all of the other demand-driven manufacturing platform elements. At the top, the, the main purpose is to provide an easy way for users and corporations to see real-time KPIs, metrics, and analytics, view and have visibility to escalations and status concerns, and generate on-demand reports based on the information that they want to see. Beneath that is elements in the platform such as Sync Manufacturing. As the system of record for planning and scheduling, Sync Manufacturing provides production history and transactional information directly to SyncView, as well as Sync Kanban providing replenishment and supplier visibility and further inventory information. And Sync Alert can provide direct maintenance and machine escalations to SyncView. And beneath all of these comes the connected machine and factory generated by Sync Operations. Sync Operations having the historian and workflow elements becomes a powerful data source for all of the, all of the other platform elements, as well as provide the Internet of Things connectivity for all real-time machine level information. As you can see, going up the scale, the, uh, the goal is to be able to view and access data. And at the bottom at Sync Operations, the idea is to be collecting and historizing data. We are now looking at a Sync View board within the software itself. We define a board within SyncView as one screen's worth of content. So this screen could appear on a large screen, as we talked about. This screen could be coming up right onto a tablet or mobile device. And it's one screen's worth that's going to allow you to take in a lot of information all at once without having to scroll or page through multiple pages worth of content. We can interact with what the different elements on the screen, and that's what we call a visualization. A visualization in SyncView is reporting live or manually inputted data directly into the board itself. These can be connected to any of the data sources that we talked about. Um, they can also be interacted with. So while on the screen, you see the several different types of visualizations. A couple are shown here, including a table. We can scroll through and see different entries. We can also look at a particular chart like this pie chart and see values. If we hover over particular pie slices, we can specify um, particular elements in the series, um, remove other elements, and drill down into that information as well as hover over a graph. And by scrolling along the axis, we can see and hover over the different data points. And then over here to the left, we have an example of another interactive visualization called an activity log. An activity log is an easy to 
create simple forms where the users have, in, have a form that they can open up and put in information, um, save that entry, and it gets saved to the log. So for example, in this case, it could be a maintenance request form where we select a resource, we put in a description, say from a you know, constructed drop-down list, what's the cause of the maintenance, and then select from a calendar and need by date. And all of these fields are user-defined and, and easy to select um, when you're setting up the format of this log as well. So we can save date. And then what we can do is put in a numeric cost, in this case, and save. And the terrific thing is that the request that we just saved and entered is tied directly to this pie chart. So the pie chart itself adjusts because it knows that a new value was saved and added it to its category matching on the right. The most important thing about SyncView is that you can access information and find out more based on the different boards of data built. So what you can do is select a link, and in this case we'll select this US overview link, and show you an example of another board type. So in this example, we're seeing what's called a blueprint visualization. And a blueprint visualization is a mini board on which we can put many different indicators or labels um, on here to show status. So in this case, we put in an image file of a geographic region. In this case, it's the US map. And what we can do is have a regional level view of different locations or warehouses or sites, for example. So we see on here the sites are indicated by an indicator. And an indicator is a visualization showing status. Beneath that indicator can be several child statuses rolled up all into one parent level indicator status. So what will happen is that if we see a red indicator here in this case, like the St. Paul location, we're drawn to find out what's wrong at this location and which metrics have been escalated beneath. So we can select the indicator and see the different sub-indicators beneath. So in this case, we're measuring metrics like revenue, on-time deliveries, and days since the last safety reportable. On-time deliveries is what's showing an escalation at this point. So at our top level, we see that most severe of statuses. And what we can do is follow this link and find out more information. So we're now at a plant level board. This plant level board we were able to drill through from our previous one, and we can drill through from this one um, to others, as we'll see in a minute. And now at the facility level view, we're looking at another blueprint, which shows a bird's eye view of different work cells or machines themselves. So these particular machine indicators are set up and showing us different statuses and space about a machine. It could be representing a work cell of multiple resources and their individual statuses. A purple indicator could show that a particular machine is offline and not running according to its connected sync operations machine state. Or we could find out other information about why a machine may be having problems. And what we see here is another red indicator showing a severe and escalated status. On the left-hand side, we see that related to on-time deliveries, which we were measuring in our US overview, that on-time deliveries for line two is experiencing a lower than desired measure at this point. Um, and a goal is somewhere in the mid-90s for percentage on time. Um, and line two is falling beneath that. And when we see over here that we have a machine state that's escalated, we may be experiencing a bottleneck or a reduced flow situation causing that on-time delivery slowness. 
we can select this particular resource, the oven, and see that oven 2 itself is what's causing the problem. We can follow this link as well. And now what we're looking at is another board, and we've drilled down to a work cell level view. And we're seeing a different level of information that matters to machine operators or users at this particular area. So within here, we can see multiple resources again. We see one particular one that has a red status. We also can see information like what's their safety record. We can see how they did yesterday on their plan versus actual deliveries made. And then we can see live information coming in about the statistics like schedule adherence. Oven 1 seems to be in its proper zone. Oven 2 for large assemblies is underperforming as well. We see connected um, temperature and pressure gauges. And these, which we will build an example of, the, of one of these, are coming directly from sync operations, machine sensors, and we'll show how we connect to those. Down here, we're showing a scrap percentage as, it, as products are completed, as well as live OEE information. A user would be able to enter a safety topic of the day. And when they do that, in what we call a text box visualization, that information is shared by all people viewing. So it's important to note that ThinkView understands and knows whoever is viewing a particular board. And for all those people who have that board pulled up, all those users are seeing the same data update at the exact same time. We're working within an internet browser or a tablet mobile browser. And in every case, that browser can stay open and is refreshing in and of itself. There's not a need to manually go in and refresh to get the latest information. We can set intervals so that information comes into a board rather frequently, several times a minute, for example. Or we can set it to be less often because it may be a daily metric and publish, and publish less frequently. But all information comes in live and can remain open and viewing all day long, up high within a manufacturing space. And at all moments of the day, we're seeing the latest information. So what we'll do is get into the editing of a board itself. And there's just one screen from which we edit a board, and that's called the board editor. The board editor is a one-stop shop to be able to create and build boards based on any elements. And those elements may be something that exists already within the system, meaning that if I search for graph, this is a outline of all graphs that have ever been built. I can reuse some ones, but then copy a new version and tweak it for my own personal use. If another person in my role has created something that I would like to use, I can find it here. Or I can just look at that board itself, make a copy, and make some changes. I can also build new visualizations. So here you're seeing a list of the different variety of things that we can build, from a simple label down to a graph or a gauge. And so what we'll do is build a gauge today. So if we drag and drop that on, We start to build it, and we create a name for it. Um, we'll leave it as a radial. It could be a bullet gauge as well. And this one, we will have the temperature of an two. And then what we can do is start to select data by which we want to measure. So we can go directly to our data sources. All the connected ones that we have, like this data sim example, this is a sync operations type connection where we can go into a particular resource like Oven2, and we can start to traverse down the tree of available sensors and context data. 
So we could go and measure the first temperature sensor on oven two, select this, and what we have is it's showing us the data that we've selected, which is going to be a timestamp and a value field. We can preview that data here so we can see the most recent entries and verify that this is the information we would like. We can filter for particular time range. We can filter for a particular day. Or we can just say save. And what it will be giving us is the most um, recent entry and updating it live as it comes in. So here is where we edit our ranges. You can think about this as the any number of zones showing status color that you'd like to create. So in, this, in the case of this oven, we could have one named warming temperature, one named bake, and one seen as the high. So we may want to start at 50 degrees and then have this one be 150. And then maybe at our most extreme range, we have 325. This one is at 225. As well as we also could have dragged in our ranges over here on the left and put it back to our 150 mark. And then what we can do is select a color by which these are going to be showing if in this range. So let's enter a particular color, yellow, orange, and high red. And then what we can also do is select it, select what to measure. So in here we could add a static value, but we want to be showing what the current reading on that temperature gauge is. So we can say connection, and it knows what the data source is connected to. And from there, it's showing us the available numeric values by which we can measure. So in this case, we can measure the temperature value, which is one of the columns in our data source. You can also add a goal marker here if you would like. Or we could say complete. So once this is on, we can resize it. We can drag and drop and place it directly onto our board um, and line it up with the other elements that we have. We can say save and move it to draft. And by moving it into draft or under construction, meaning more intensive editing is happening, all viewers are still able to see the information. It's just to signify that the information has not been formally published yet. We can see it's already reading information. Right now it's got a value of 30 that it's reading, so it's below our range of 50. But as you can see, it immediately started to read those values and was instantly a part of this board. Within the blueprint itself, building an indicator is extremely straightforward and can be done by a similar way where you add an indicator this indicator could be selected from our image library. This is to show a number of operations, areas, and machine statuses. So here we have a particular one for oven. We have others as well as certain other statuses for safety, maintenance, etc. We can say complete. And then we can start to set up what becomes the rules as to what is that showing, red, yellow, or green. So if we were talking about schedule adherence, we could select this table, which is just the straight database table available to us. We could create then a conditional that says where the schedule adherence value, um, and we're building sort of that natural language rule if that value is greater than 90%, then mark that as green and say save. 
what we can do is add a second one to say if that same schedule adherence is between 80 in that first numeric field and 90 in that second, then we can mark it yellow. And we can add a last one for the range where if the schedule adherence is less than 80, then mark it as red. So we fully built a indicator with three conditions. We can save this, save our save our indicator, and once again we see it on the blueprint and we can move it around, place it over the correct location within the blueprint, and push complete. And we can mark it back to published. And what we will see is the two new data visualizations that we had just created. So that's an overview of the SyncView product itself, including how to build and what are some of the data possibilities within it. And with that, I will pass it back over to Pam. Thank you, Sarah. That was a great overview of SyncView software. And thanks, everyone, for attending today. If you'd like more information on SyncView software or demand-driven manufacturing in general, please visit Synchrono.com. And if you'd like to see a more in-depth demonstration of SyncView software, you can request one directly from our website. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you on a webinar soon.